Hey, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Carmine Sabia, and this is Explain America. House Judiciary Chairman and Ohio Representative Republican Jim Jordan laced into Alvin Bragg and laid bare his horrible record on crime in New York City in a five-minute blistering opening statement that you have to hear to believe. Alvin Bragg's ears must still be ringing. Folks, let's take a look at it. Today's hearing is about the administration of justice and keeping communities safe something that has always been a central focus of the House Judiciary Committee. Our witnesses today have felt the effects of crime up close and personal. They've been victimized by a justice system that cares more about political correctness than punishing the criminals who've harmed them and harmed their family. We thank them for being here and sharing their story. Their stories are emblematic of a city that's lost its way when it comes to fighting a crime and upholding the law. As we all know, fairness under the law is a bedrock principle of American democracy. In this country, justice is supposed to be blind, regardless of race, religion, or creed. However, here in Manhattan, the scales of justice are weighed down by politics. For the district attorney, justice isn't blind. It's about looking for opportunities to advance a political agenda, a radical political agenda. Rather than enforcing the law, the DA is using his office to do the bidding of left-wing campaign funders. He's taken a soft on crime approach to the real criminals. One of Mr. Bragg's first actions upon taking office in January of 2022 was to put out a memo that directed his assistant district attorneys not to prosecute certain crimes, including trespassing and resisting arrest. The memo also stated that armed robberies should not be prosecuted as felonies. Instead, they were to be considered as misdemeanor larceny unless someone was shot during the course of the robbery. Thank goodness, after a backlash from police groups and the public, Mr. Bragg agreed to prosecute some robberies as felonies, but left the rest of the memo in place. The president of NYPD Detectives Endowment Association said, quote, Bragg gives criminals the roadmap to freedom from prosecution and control of our streets. In Bragg's Manhattan, you can resist arrest, deal drugs, obstruct arrest, and even carry a gun to get away with it. And guess what happened under this new policy? More crime. In 2022, Mr. Bragg's first year as district attorney, New York City saw a 23% surge in major crimes. Felony assaults rose 13%, robberies spiked 26%, burglaries in New York City went up 23%, Grand larcenies were up 26%, and auto theft increased 32%. Transit crime surged nearly 30%. Imagine that. You leave criminals on the street, you get more crime. Patrick Lynch, the president of the Police Benevolent Association, said, Police officers don't want to be sent out to enforce laws that the district attorneys won't prosecute. There are already too many people who believe that they can commit crimes, resist arrest, interfere with police officers, <clears throat> and face zero consequences. We should take a minute here to thank our brave men and women in law enforcement. We've got a number of them right here in this building. Thank you for what you do. In the last few years, police have been villainized and harassed by the left and even defunded. These men and women put their lives on the line every day every single day, and they deserve our deepest gratitude. But that's not what they're getting from left-wing district attorneys here and around the country. Police do their job, they do the hard work, they go out on the streets, they catch the bad guys, and then the DAs don't do theirs, don't do their job. Instead, they let bad guys roam the street. As we'll hear today, repeat offenders are plaguing New York City. On April 6, 2023, NYPD Commissioner Seawall said recidivism is the undertow pulling against everything we're doing to keep our city safe. It is counterproductive to public safety and frankly is a perpetual carousel of police resources. Astonishingly, Sewell said that 327 individuals were arrested more than 6,000 times for retail theft. Think about that. 327 individuals responsible for 6,000 retail thefts what we used to call stealing, taking someone else's property, each person arrested on average 20 times. Maybe we wouldn't have had that problem if they'd arrested them and kept them in jail after the first, the second, or maybe even the 19th time. 
average of 20 times. Given the record of crime, the record level of crime we are seeing around the country, our plan this Congress has been to include field hearings in some of our greatest cities, to analyze and highlight how soft on crime policies hurt families, hurt communities, hurt small business owners. We believe it's important to hear from victims and their families who simply want to share their stories, hoping, hoping that it will help create change so other families don't have to suffer like they did. What better place to start than New York City, where videos of violent, senseless attacks appear almost daily, and where the DA of Lower Manhattan earned a reputation for caring more about the perpetrators of crime than the victims. Thanks again to all our brave witnesses for being here. And thanks to the NYPD, the Capitol Police, and the Federal Protective Services for all they do to keep people safe. It is safe to say that Alvin Bragg has, if not destroyed New York City, greatly, greatly assisted in its demise after Rudy Giuliani and Mike Bloomberg did a lot to fix that city. Between him, new mayor Eric Adams, it's just, it's just a destruction derby. Not to mention Bill de Blasio before him. These soft on crime approaches are hurting our big cities. They are destroying them. And Jordan and the House Judiciary Committee are going to lay it bare in these hearings. Stay with us as we cover every nook and cranny of them. Folks, please remember to like, comment, share, and subscribe. We love you guys. God bless you. Take care, everybody.